What is up my friends? Welcome to another Monday video here on CoolStuffInc.com where we're tapping into modern and we're uh, tapping into a creature type that hasn't been tapped too often lately. And that of course is Eldrazi. Now, modern of course is a format that waxes and wanes, you know, cards get good, cards get bad, decks come in, decks come out, all based on metagame trends. And one of the biggest trends right now, of course, is Faithless Looting, Arclight Phoenix, Lightning Bolt, Thing in the Ice decks. Uh, is it Arclight? Um, reaching numbers that are not commonly seen in modern as far as, you know, amount played. Uh, deck is exceedingly popular, very powerful. Very reminiscent of the old blue-red twin decks in a lot of ways, where they're fundamentally a fair deck, playing a lot of great interactive cards, but also features some busted broken draws. Of course, twin could kill on turn four. You know, Phoenix isn't that busted, but attacking with two Arclight Phoenixes on turn two, or flipping thing in the ice and attacking for ten on turn three, all pretty busted things to be doing in a game of modern. So, very powerful fair deck with unfair angles as well and um a lot of us has left the format looking very lightning bolt heavy and then looking kind of linear again um decks that are trying to fight the is it phoenix menace or a little more you know, like amulet titan uh ad nauseum decks are a little more linear um and the arc light deck has really pushed out a lot of the tribal decks the noble hierarch decks humans spirits etc and um Humans, in particular, is one of the big reasons why the Eldrazi decks kind of disappear a little bit. Um, because they just have bigger creatures that come out faster. But playing against Lightning Bolt decks, these are the cards you ought to be playing. But more than that, past the Eldrazi, this is an Eldrazi deck, but realistically, this is a Chalice of the Void deck. And you want to cast the card against Is It Phoenix and have them concede fairly quickly, unless they can find a thing in the ice pronto. Chalice the Void is it. Also, of course, absurd against Burn and Death Shadow and a large swath of the format in general. Um, I think this is one of the best Chalice the Void decks in the format, as well as the best Eldrazi deck. This is probably the, maybe even the least known Eldrazi deck. You know, there was Eldrazi Tron and Red Green Eldrazi for a while, Bant Eldrazi back in the day. This is a very interesting, very creative take on the Eldrazi deck. This is the colorless Eldrazi deck. It's been floating around for a while. And um, I haven't played it a ton, but when I have played it, I've been very, very impressed. So, of course, the power of the Eldrazi decks in modern is Eldrazi Temple. If you look at the older formats, they're able to play things like Ancient Tomb and City of Traders to have redundancy on their temples. Uh, we can't do that in modern, of course. So, how are we going to make sure we have temple every game? How are we Serum Powder? Now, this is a card seen in Vintage and occasionally in Wacky Combo decks. Because it is a pretty finicky card. This card allows you to essentially mulligan your hand into exile and just draw a new seven cards whenever it is in your opening hand. So that sounds great. I can find all my good cards, right? The problem, of course, is when you have a hand that's pretty good with a powder in it, or you draw powder on turn one, and it's essentially just a worthless artifact. However, we're going above and beyond here because there is a pretty sneaky synergy involved with Serum Powder and the card Eternal Scourge where Eternal Scourge can be cast from Exile. So anytime you Serum Powder your hand and there's an Eternal Scourge in it, you're essentially drawing a card for free. So in this deck, it's possible to mulligan up to eight or perhaps even nine cards. You Serum Powder away a Scourge or two, you keep your seven. Well, now you have a nine card opening hand, which is pretty awesome. And it's actually a really powerful and creative synergy. Um, we also see this with the Gemstone Caverns, same idea. If we're on the draw, we get to exile our Scourge and still able, still be able to play it. So this is a way of taking the drawback of both of these cards and turning it into something very special with Eternal Scourge, a card that's already very reasonable. You know, very good against fair decks. Can't kill it with, with, with removal, it always comes back. So, And the Serum Powders allow us a lot of really good shots at just finding Temple. You know, this is the kind of deck where if it had Temple in its opening hand every game, this deck would be bonkers. But... We can't do that, obviously, you know. So Powder helps us do that. And we're not mucking around with any other colors. Um, these decks have played Expedition Map, you know, the Tron lands for Eldrazi Tron. They've played Ancient Stirrings before to try and find their temples. But that adds a lot of inconsistency, inconsistency to, to, to a deck where 
you need colorless mana, and you need certain colorless lands early. So by being mono colorless, we have the ability to play a lot of great value lands in our mana base for essentially free. Uh, four Ghost Quarter, obviously phenomenal against Tron and Creature Lands. The two of the aforementioned Gemstone Caverns for um, the uh, Chrome Mox effect of being able to steal the playback. Uh, a couple of Cavernous Souls, make sure our Thought Not Seers and Smashers don't, don't get countered. Blink Moth Nexus and Mutavolt for Creature Lands for a little extra value out of our lands. Of course, Scavenger Grounds, a great card in a graveyard-centric format. An Herb Work, make our dismembers a little less painful, and two copies of Wastes. Um, I think finding the right mix of these lands is very difficult. Uh, I could see playing more Creature Lands, I could see playing less Cavern of Souls, but the exact mix is tough. And of course, we're playing four Spirit Guides to ensure we have turn one Chalice the Void, and of course, just firing off a Thought Knot on turn one or two is pretty good as well. So, Mimic, Matter Shaper, Thought not, Reality Smasher, the usual Eldrazi Curve. Four copies of Dismember. Uh, we, our mana base is completely pain-free, so the pain from Dismember, not too bad. Also allows us to play a one-mana spell in our Chalice of the Void deck. And this card is just quite good in general. Kills Gourmet Angler, kills Thing in the Ice, etc., etc. And our one Miser's card, in a lot of lists, this is a Smuggler's Copter in this deck, because obviously our options are somewhat limited, given the fact that we're colorless. We're playing a Sword of Fire and Ice, so... Obviously, very good against Is it? Um, sneakily good against on our creature lands. Uh, a card like Blink Moth Nexus can be a sneaky attacker for the sword out of nowhere, which is pretty cool. Powerful card. Um, Copter is cool, also, but not great in this deck. Um, but Sword's a pretty spicy one. Cyborg's got four ley lines, of course. Um, graveyard hate, very, very important. Two copies of Endbringer for when the game's gonna be a little more fair. We need a little more top end. Two Warping Whales. Countering sorceries, reasonable, um, exiles thing in the ice, and some other possible creatures. Uh, three contortion is our removal spell of choice against humans and spirits, which again is a not a great matchup for us. Two torpor orb, our silver bullet against humans. Uh, play this on turn two, and none of their cards really do anything, which is awesome. And of course, two damping sphere for Tron and uh, spell based combo deck. So the deck doesn't look like much, but it really is quite exciting. And again being very well positioned against the is it phoenix decks is a really good place to be in modern right now so we're gonna play a league we'll jam right through it and we'll see how see how this goes this deck has been a pleasant surprise for me every time i've played it when i look at it i kind of go eh, i'm not big on these chalice the void decks it's a lot of threes but there's a lot of power in putting a thought not seer into play on turn two and uh Eldrazi Temple is pretty unfair, and we find it pretty consistently. And honestly, the Serum Powder Eternal Scorch interaction is just awesome. Hopefully, we'll see a lot of that this league. Okay, so we are on the draw with a Gemstone Caverns, a Ghost Quarter, a Reshaper, a Thought Knot, a Dismember, and a Chalice of the Voids. We have turn one Chalice on the draw with our Gemstone Caverns and our land. Um, no Eldrazi Temple, which is the first thing we're looking for in every hand, but I think this is pretty good. Unfortunately, we're not going to know what they're playing until we have to exile a card. So it's hard to know if we want to ship off this dismember. If we want to keep the spirit guide to help cast our creatures a little faster. Um, we're going to need to land as early as turn two to make our third land drop. So mana seems somewhat important. Um, again, this is a hand that would be insane with an eternal scourge or with a temple. But I think we're going to keep this hand... And it's tough. We just don't know how good this card is going to be. Um, I think I'm just going to keep the spirit guide. It's really tough. So we go, we draw a card, play Ghost Quarter, and then we draw a card the next turn. And we'll need to draw on a land of those two cards that have a mana source. Nah, I'm going to discard the, the Dismember. Hopefully we don't regret this, but I think uh, the ability to have turn two Thought Not Seer if we draw a land is pretty great. Let's see what they're playing. Verdant Catacombs. We go. Okay. Probably not. Ooh. <laughs> um, so we have the option for turn one Thought Not Seer or... We can go turn one chalice on one. 
Now they put up Catacombs, didn't play a discard spell. Possible they're playing like a rock deck of some kind. Um Which means that Fatal Push is likely. And if they didn't if they're kept if they're playing Rock and they kept their hand, they probably have a push or a discard spell. So I think that playing turn one Thought Nuts here is just here is just irresponsible. Uh, I think we should probably just play with Chalice of the Wood and lock out their fatal pushes and go from there. Um I know we're passing up on turn one, thought not, but let's get a little more information here and try and defend it a little bit better, if possible. Now I do wish, of course, that I kept the dismember because we drew the best possible land, but we couldn't know we were drawing that, so. Stomping ground. Okay. So could be dredge or valakit. All right, that might be a valakit. All right, so that's tough for us. Our chalice is not very good here. And honestly, if I had known this, I would, I would have cast Chalice on two probably at some point. Try to do it later. Um, we do have turn two Thought Knot, which is very good. It's a pretty good clock. But this seems like it might be a little difficult. We'll see. So still turn two Thought Knots here. So their hand is Flame Slash Summoner's Pact. That's tough. No ramp, though. Um, oh, they can't, they can't cast Flame Slash, though. We have Chalice in play. So, never mind. <laughs> it would have been an interesting choice if they couldn't if they could cast the Flame Slash. So, we'll take Pact, and they have basically nothing. Um, unfortunately, they only really need one big card to really go off, but they don't have any ramp either. So, they do have a Misty for their Expedition, so this, this will go off in two turns. Um, and any ramp spell is pretty good here, too. So, not in amazing shape, but... Yeah, that's bad for us. Okay, it's bad in that they have enough mana now to do whatever they want, but it's not that bad for us in the fact that their hand is Mountain Mountain Flame Slash. So they're just playing off the top, and it's going to be on us to kill them as quickly as we possibly can. And that is actually a pretty good draw. Just puts a lot of pressure in play. So we can play our Shaper, Spirit Guide out this Eternal Scourge, and attack for four, and we have them dead in two turns. Two more turns, I suppose. If draw Titan, we're probably dead. If they don't draw Titan, we're gonna be it's gonna be fine. This puts the fourteen. This puts them to four. Yeah, so we have two more attack steps, barring a Reality Smasher off the top, of course. All right, Foothills is not one of the cards in their hand, so we know that we know they have per perfect information. Smasher, no, yeah. that's fine. It's third four. They're dead next turn. Uh, I guess there's actually no reason. I guess we still play the temple. Um, if they cast Anger of the Gods, then it just goes into exile, which is fine. And if they're able to get a Titan and kill some things, the extra thing in play might help. They're playing Scape Shift. We'll just die to it. All right, cool. So, Thought Knots here are pretty good. Um, even in matchups that seem a little hard, obviously just playing a 4 4 on turn 2 that Thought Seizes them is a pretty good plan of action. All right, so they're playing Valakit. Looks like they're playing Scape Shift because they are fetching out the basic forests. Um, it's not much to do here, really, though. Warping Whale can counter a Ram Spell or Scape Shift. Um, otherwise, we really have nothing. This number is pretty bad. It's possible they have. Um, I have uh, Obstinate Bailoff post board, which is actually pretty good against us. So, maybe we'll just leave in two of these dismembers. Um, Torpor Orb will stop the comes into play trigger on the the Titan, but honestly, the six six is pretty good against us, and this turns off our Thought Not Seers. So, I don't think that's really worth it. Um, I think we're just gonna leave in the two dismembers. I think that's probably just our best. Our best. Oh, we're, we're gonna bring in our yeah our warping wells and leave in two dismembers. Unfortunately, chalice is also really bad, but chalice on two is actually fine. And realistically, we just don't have things to bring in for it. Um, you know, contortion, damping sphere, torpor orb, leyline, endbringer. None of these cards are really doing much. I mean, endbringer's like, you know, it, I guess it could do something, but it's not really doing much. So. I think Chalice is still probably okay. Um, we saw Flame Slash, probably have more of those. Um, 
And then Chalicing on two seems like a somewhat reasonable course of action. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not thrilled with it, but it's, it's either that or these cards. And these cards don't seem very good. So, definitely not the matchup we had in mind when we registered this deck, but oh boy. So we're on the draw, and we could do Chalice of the Void on two on our turn two, but they'll, they'll have already had their turn two, and it locks our Mimic out. This hand's pretty bad. This is like they want to mulligan pretty aggressively, so this hand's just going to go away pretty fast. Okay, now we come to one of the more interesting choices of the deck. So we have a Serum Powder, and we have a hand that is pretty bad, but there's a Temple. And Temple is definitely by far our best card. So the question is, is it worth just getting a new six, but losing one temple out of our deck? Chalice is pretty bad, and our hand is actual no pressure. So I think we're going to ship this one with our, our Serum Powder. It is essentially a free mulligan. Um, it is unfortunate that we're going to lose a temple, but we're not going to five here. I think in this scenario where our hand was like like a seven card hand, it was like temple, 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 ghost quarter, ghost quarter, Serum Powder. Maybe you would actually mulligan rather than Serum Powder Mulligan, but one temple is not enough to make me do that. So let's get our first powder going. Oh man. All right, now our next hand is very similar. Temple, lands, and not much else. Um, now we're not Serum Powder Mulliganing, so going to five isn't as exciting. Um, and we do have Chalice of the Void for one on turn one which may or may not be good. I think we're going to have to keep this hand. We're on the draw with a scry. We have a temple. Any big Aldrazi makes this hand good. And Chalice will hopefully be reasonable. Uh, we're going to keep... It's not good, but we're going to keep it. And there you go. Bingo, bango. Um, we're probably going to cast that on turn two. We're going to forego the turn two Chalice and just cast the uh, Thought Not Zero on turn two. Or turn one gels. Forest. It's kind of weird they would fetch out the basic forests like this. Um, typically, these decks want to get mountains in play, so they naturally draw a Balakit. They can, uh, they can, you know, do that sort of thing, but it just makes me feel like they're playing Scape Shift. Okay. Um, doesn't really matter which land we play. All right, turn to you thought not once again. Light them up. Their hand is Scape Shift, Roast Titan. So their hand is pretty good. Um, I think realistically we have to take the roast. Um, it's our only clock and there are a few turns from actually doing anything. You know, they are, they need to make three more land drops to cast Titan. The shift won't matter until they have eight lands. So I think it's a pretty easy roast here. And, uh, you know, we can hope to draw, um, you know, Smasher, Thought Knots here. Like we said, we don't really have a ton of good disruption for them, unfortunately. But I would definitely like them to not cast a ram spell here. They did not. Good. Gems the caverns. Okay. Fourteen. They go land. We attack for seven. They play Titan. It's not great. Uh you might need a little help here, but we are going to, I guess, just Gemstone Caverns, play Scourge, say go. Playing Chalice on two doesn't really do anything. I mean, if we had no other option, we would probably do it, but I think that just playing a creature is far better. All right. Where's that Reality Smasher do? you know? All right, Smasher 
off the top rope. No. Okay. So they have... All right, I think we're going to we're going to play as Matter Shaper. I think we're going to Chalice on one. I just don't think that uh this Chalice is ever going to do anything anyway. And they're going to play a Titan. They get to get they have they have about that five mountains six seven. They get to bolt something, and I think we're just drawing to Smasher basically. So. We'll see if that happens or not. Uh, what? <laughs> Maybe they clicked the wrong card? I, I, I don't know. I mean, they had Titan. They had one forest in play. They get a Valakit and a Mountain. They Lightning Bolt something. Eternal Scourge. They have a 6-6 six, six blocker. We just have to draw a Smasher. Top card was... Why don't you show me? Okay. I wasn't feeling awful about being on the play for game three, but that was peculiar. I don't know. I don't know. I guess I presume they just clicked the wrong card. It's all that really makes sense to me, honestly. Like, oh, they, they did only tap four lands. Yeah, I guess they clicked the wrong card, started paying for it, and just like, yeah, I, that's probably what happened. I, I don't know. I, I could not tell you. I'm not in my opponent's heads. All right, so you're on the play. Let's get back into our own head here. And we have an opener. That looks pretty damn good. We got... Temple. So all, basically, all you're looking for ever is Temple. Uh, we have a Powder. We're not going to use it. So we have Temple and, and Eldrazi, and we're on the play. We have Turn 2 Mimic, Turn turn, turn 1 Mimic, Turn 2 Reshaper. Draw some lands, we'll have Smasher. Of course, you know, just cast this Powder if we have to. It's not ideal, but... Mimic is definitely the worst card in the deck, but it is consistently inconsistent. Um, it is definitely... Just a necessary evil. You need some other creature. You know, there have been the the white Eldrazi decks floating around that are very similar to this deck, just playing Thalia in this spot. Uh, but I think that the adding a color to the deck makes things far too complicated. What am I doing? Let's go. Emic. Emic, where you at? Let's go. Pass priority back to me. I have to guess Emic. I forgot. My foot is caught on something. All right. There you go, friend. All right. Gemstone Mine. Faithless Looting. And dredge, I suppose? Don't think Gemstone Mine is correct in Dredge. I know it's common. That is common prevailing theory. I disagree with it very strongly. I think that you want to use all of your lands every turn, and you have much easier time flashing back lootings and can't playing life from alums when your land doesn't just die on the third turn. Blood gas, Golgari thug. Okay, they have made up their mind. They are dredging. Seems a little difficult for us. Um. We're gonna go to a team. We have a pretty, you know, pretty fast attack here. 
all things considered, we're attacking for three on turn two, six on turn three. Um, let's creep and chill. Dark Blast. It's kind of annoying. All right, so get back a Blood Guest. It's not too bad. If a Cathartic here, things get a little ugly. Shriekhorn's fun. Another Creeping Chill. Another Blood Guest. Okay, that's all pretty cool. Dismember is not that cool. Um, it's not even an interesting choice. We can Matter Shaper, leave up Dismember, it's probably not going to cast. Or we can hard cast Serum Powder to try and set up a Smasher next turn. Um, I think playing Matter or Shaper just seems more more reasonable. Just spell next turn, we're pretty happy anyway, I think. A lot of our spells kind of suck, but... Their hand seems kind of slow, so... They're already 14. They have Creeping Chill this twice, which is a pretty significant hit, honestly. Don't think I'm terrified to block the Blood Gas with the Matter Shaper. She'll give us another shot at a land. Might fire up Dark Blast here. Nope. They'd read Stinkweed Imp. Stinkweed Imp is actually quite good against us, unfortunately. Dread some war cards. They got Blood Gast in there. Not a very good hand from them to start, honestly. We're gonna block. Buys us a few life. Might find us a land. Put Chalice the Void into your battlefield. It's pretty bad. It's basically a worst case scenario, unfortunately. Now they go land Stinkweed Imp. We can dismember it and then hopefully draw land. And. Yeah, I think Gemstone Mine is just the worst. Yep. All right, so their blood guests are back. We are probably just not casting this member this game. Um, whoop. Tilt. All right. It's fine. It could be worse. It is somewhat amusingly bad against the card uh, conflagrate, but all right, let's say looting, dredge, dark blast. There's the conflagrate, which is bad because they have eight cards in their hand. Yeah, we're just dead. They just do seven and one, and they attack us for. Yep. All right. Those two, those two creeping chills did us in. And uh, not drawing a land for Smasher. Dredge doesn't seem like a great matchup, but it's how we have four ley lines on the board, you know? We'll see if they'll figure out the play or not. See, if they hadn't lost their gemstone line, they could have played land, cast life from alone, gotten more lands, and, and then complicated, but. Sure, that plays too. All right, I mean, this also kills us.
Yeah, I mean, Gimme Joe's pretty good. I mean, they would have been at four. And we, we would be at six if it wasn't for those Creeping Chills. Creeping Chills uh, is definitely a magic card. Definitely a magic card. All right, so definitely want our Ley Lines, of course. Uh, Chalice the Void's not really great here. Um, they're not really like relying on ones too much. And then December's also very bad. They're going to want these Endbringers. And... I guess I don't hate Warping Wheel. Countering a Cathartic Reunion or a Life Malone or a Conflagrate or a Looting is all reasonable. And uh, it's obviously much better than Dismember. You can also Exile a Stinky Nip in a Pinch, too. So. Sort of Fire and Ice does not seem great, but it does seem better than the other options. So. I'm cool with this. Leyline of the Void. Okay. So we have a pretty awkward end. We have five lands of a temple and a scavenger grounds, which is very good. However, we have a spirit guide and a 3 3, which is not good. So we also have the ability to turn two scavenger grounds off of a, of a spirit guide. But that'll leave us with, you know, very little mana in play. Um, you could also just turn one Eternal Scourge, turn two Nexus or, or Muta Vault, turn three Scavenger Grounds after they have dredged some. But I think his hand is a little too weak. I mean, also, one of the important things to recognize when you're mulliganing is thinking about how many aces you have in your deck. So, for example... If you were to rate all the cards in your deck as playing cards, you know, you have aces, kings, jacks, tens, you know, this card's like a, an eight, you know, temple's like a, you know, king, queen, scourge is like a, in this matchup, a five, six, seven, whatever, but we have four aces in our lay one of the void, and every mulligan is another chance to find one of those, and with serum powder compounding that, I think we're much more likely to mulligan, so, mulligan. All right, our next hand is a Serum Powder hand we are happy to get rid of. No Temples, no Ley Lines, a couple of Worthless Lands. Losing a Thought Knots here, it's whatever. We get another shot at our, our Ley Lines, which is great. The synergy between Ley Line and Serum Powder is quite nice. Okay, now we have a new six card hand with a Temple. And two Smashers. But, that's kind of it. Um, we have no other mana. And we're kind of unlikely to get off the ground here. While well, I'm loath to lose a Temple, losing two of these sucks. We'll just fire off again. We got four Ley Lines still floating around, so let's try and find them. This hand's pretty bad. Uh, if we had a temple, I'd be interested. But we have scavenger grounds, but not enough mana to really do much. We're essentially playing turn three matter or shaper, which is not very good. Yeah, we're going to ship this. That's a hit. That is a hit. All right, we're going to keep. We're going to send the Simeon Spirit Guide to the bottom. Uh, we're at the point now we'd rather have um, actual mana sources, not just uh, one-shot deals. We also have a Scourge floating around Exile, too, which is important. So we have a, this is a six-card hand, not a five-card hand. Gems don't mind. All right, so they might have like the nuts here with uh, Nature's Claim and all, but it's not really a ton we can too about, do about that. Um... We could Nexus Poke for one, but if they have a Dark Blast, that is a disaster. So I'm not really interested in letting that happen. They have Claim. Of course they do. All right. I mean, 
Unfortunately, they're if they keep a full seven with a claim and their hand is functional. Oh, their hand is not functional. Okay, never mind. So they kept a very sketchy hand on the back of claim, and now they have nothing. So if they draw land, we are going to die. But they have to draw the land. All right, now I think we again need to say go. I'm not interested in playing a matter shaper. I want to play a Thought Nuts here if I draw a land. So we're just going to say go. And hope they miss on land again. Okay. Now they can discard to hand size, which is actually to their benefit, but they can't really start dredging yet because they only have one land in play. So this is all fine. Draw. <sighs> Brutal. Brutal. <sighs> I still think we're just saying go and saving Simeon Spirit Guide for Thought Not Seer. We have an ugly game of magic brewing here. Of course, this Mad Shaper would have gotten in for six already, but. So they they just they're just dredging. Um, this is a a weird play for our opponent to make because it's essentially locking them out of the game as far as ever casting a spell. So we're just gonna hope that a natural dredge for three to five cards every turn is good enough. It usually isn't, but the impetus is on us to actually do something. So all right, big draw. Really hate ley lines. It is turn five, and we actually haven't done anything yet. So that is bad. I guess the Roshaper would have attacked for nine at this point, but again, I, I still think it's correct to have waited for the Thought Knots here. They dredge five. No, they natural drew this time. Okay. It's a weird a weird change to make when they nothing has happened to make them change their mind, but okay. Interesting. Sort of blood gas, sure. Man, you're killing me, Smalls. You are killing me. Um all right. oh, what? I broke it. Why would it do that? Why would it why would it separate the Oh, magic online. Oh, you. All right. We're going to say go. If they do nothing once again, we're going to make a token and cast a Thought Knots here. All right. They are in their draw step, and they're going to natural draw again. Please don't draw land. Or looting. All right. We're, we're going to counter this. This is a pretty easy counter. We cannot let them get going here. And we can always just naturally draw land ourselves, just like this. <gasps> um, great, fantastic. See, here's not actually that important here, but they have like a lightning axe, something we can at least get that. Also, their gemstone mine's about to die because gemstone mine is the worst. Oh yeah, their hand is bad. Uh, creeping Chill, Creeping Chill, Narco Weaver, Narco Weaver are basically blank cards. Um, they have a Loam. The Axe is obviously going to go, and they have a Dark Blast. So their hand is real bad. I think they basically have to draw a land this turn, or they're dead. And even then, like, they just don't have... They can't really cast spells either. Like, oh, this, this is... This is this is something else. I think our opponent kept their hand on the back of their Nature's Claim, but I don't think their hand was actually keepable. Mimic. That's fine. Um, we so we attack. We can cast mimic and matter shaper, or mimic and sword of fire and ice. I kind of like playing the sword, honestly. They can't really block it, and if I want to, if they want to dark blast the mimic, then they have to stone rain themselves, which I am more than fond of. So I'm pretty cool with this. 
It's funny they had the Dark Blast, though. We, we chose not to attack with our, our Nexus for that reason. This is the ugliest game of magic of all time. However, we will take it. Discard another amalgam. All right, so we are going to equip here, and we're going to attack. Um, they can dark bless this, and getting the sword online is just you know a two-turn clock that draws his cards. So, no dark blast here. We draw a reality smasher. Not too shabby. Up, oh, they drew a land. They're so lucky. All right, so the problem, of course, for them is that the Blood Yast and Amalgams don't play any defense, uh, so they can cast their Loam here, and it just doesn't really do anything, especially because they're losing their land, because Gemstone Mine is the worst. Sure. I believe they're just dead on board. Like, a couple of different ways. Oh, they must, they must have drawn his last turn? Okay, sure. That's pretty good, actually. Alright. So, fire away. Assassin's Trophy. Okay, so they just British bricked. Which, I mean, they would have to hit pretty good there to keep going, so... They also screwed up. They discarded the Narcomibus and they didn't discard the Dredge cards in their hand. Odd oh, Dredge player we're playing against, you know? Alright, so game three. Not much is going to change. Definitely a weird game. That was not a, not a regular game of Magic. We didn't play a spell until turn five? Maybe six? <laughs> like... Ooh, well, how would you like a turn two Thought Not Seer and turn zero Leon? I would like that, actually. Thank you very much. I'll keep that. Uh, put you in play, and we'll get you in play, and we'll ship off our, I guess, Cavern of Souls. Only that. Or Cavern of Waste the same card, functionally, so... Not bad for opening hand actions, you know? I mean, they might have claim again, which would be annoying. That's a good draw. Hmm. Wild Nicotle, basically. As it is, it's a lot to ask of your dredge deck to have a fully functional hand, because dredge mulligan's a lot anyway and the nature's claim, but if they have it, we are probably going to get destroyed because that's what it's going to do. That's really cool. Now our Thought Not Seer will live. They get the dredge, so it's not bad for them. Our Scourge goes into exile. We can cast it, which is cool. It's cute. Not really the magic we wanted in, but all right, let's see what their hand is. They have Stinkweed Imp, Cathartic Reunion, Assassin's Trophy. All right, so kind of stinky, um, but it's, um, honestly, the card Stinkweed Imp is kind of good against us, just in general, as far as I can just play it and block with it. Um, Cathartic, obviously the most busted card, but they don't really have any dredge cards at the moment. And if they discard a Assassin's Trophy, it's fine. And if they want a trophy, my Thought Not Seer isn't even that bad either. I'm taking the Stinkweed Imp here. Um, they can draw and dredge life malum, but they are very low on resources for Cathartic anyway. Um, they're low on dredge cards. And again, if they want to Assassin's Trophy, my Thought Not Seer, so be it. I can't really stop it. Yeah. We also have his sword floating around, so the extra mana is kind of nice. Um, and we can actually equip our Eternal Scourge. It is abilities and spells our opponents control, not us, which is kind of cool. Right, so they blued Crypt, Dredge Loam. They hit nothing, which is good. Man, 
turn one nature slam both games. Rude. And this is a good part because when you board your hate against dredge, even if they draw it, which is annoying, every hate card they draw is not a linear card. So you can see right now, they kind of just don't have much going on. They drew a claim and a, a lightning axe and assassin's trophy, and they just like don't have many dredgers or things to do with them. So their engine is really slow to get off the ground. So even though it didn't do the job it's supposed to do, it did somewhat of a good job. All right, so they dredge along, get some lands back, which is fine. Um, and we are going to attack and play some more stuff and just keep keep pressuring. It's fine. Appling Gorge. Yeah, so they have a, a Foothills and a Gemstone Mine in their end, which is fine. Um, kind of want to make some moves here for sure. I think we're definitely casting the Eternal Scourge and attacking. The Muta Vault also. I guess we don't need to do this in this exact order, but it's fine. We know their entire hand, so six balls are reasonable ball. All right, Nark can be a bit Dark Blast. It's fine. They can Cathartic plus Trophy here, which is actually pretty good because they can use the draw step from Thought Not Seer to Dredge, which is kind of cute. They have a a Loam in their hands. They have two Dredge threes, which isn't even that good. All right, yeah, Cathartic, discarding Loam and a land. So they Dredge three and then Dredge three. All right, so they hit a Loam, and they hit a Blood Guest, and a Loam. So, not very exciting. They only dredge six cards there. But they get to go land. I mean, I think they can go land, Thought Knot, and then draw off the Thought Knot trigger. We're going to get a land off Assassin's Trophy, but... Are they going to wait? All right. I mean, we're going to sort of fire an ice here. That's a pretty good draw, too. They currently have no blocks for it, so things do get a little awkward here because the the Stinkweed Imp just being hard cast is actually kind of tough at the moment, but... Oh, uh, I punted. I forgot they dredged, they, they dredged Dark Blast. Okay, I mean, they didn't kill my Thought Knot and they didn't dredge off of it, but I, I just forgot they had Dark Blast in their hand. That's my fault. Um, Knowing they have Dark Blast... Oh my god. Who thought this card was a good idea? Like, it's not playable in standard. It wasn't playable in draft. Like, who who thought this card was a good idea? We're just getting nine balls. I mean, that swings the entire game. The free 18-point life swing. So, yeah, I mean, knowing they have Dark Blast last turn, our play is, our play is probably the same, honestly. I don't, I don't even know. I'm just, like, force it out of him. I guess a Mutavolt could have gotten in, but it's not really a winning situation either way. Man, that was unreal. If you saw my article on Friday, I talked about how Faithless Looting and Ancient Stirrings are actually good cards for Modern. And they, they actually promote a healthy Modern format. And I talked about the cards I thought should really be banned. The cards that provide free effects that are degenerate. And Creeping Chill may have been on that list. So if you missed it, check it out. CoolStuffInc.com, my article from last Friday. Entitled, What Cards Should Be Really Be Banned in Modern. Play a copper line gorge. And just, so they still have Assassin's Trophy. Alright. Ooh. Hello. Uh yeah, that is. That's it. That is. That's that's what the kids are saying these days, right? So now you put the sword on the smasher and fire away here. And they have two Assassin's Trophy. I and mean, they still have a ton of life, like a ton, uh, unfortunately. So we'll see what they do here. 
All right, they're going for it. So I get to discard a Stink Vedan, which is adorable, of course. Uh, we will use that ability, yes. Yes, they would be at nine going to f five here, unfortunately, but... Narc and maybe the conflict. Yeah, I mean, we are just dead. Unfortunately, they are now firing on all cylinders, and they are able to answer our ley line. And realistically, I mean, if Dredge is going to keep seven card hands that has an answer to ley line as well as the good stuff going on, it's going to be very hard to beat them. I mean, it just kind of is what it is. Like, Dredge is already somewhat finicky in their opening hands, and you know, they effectively have eight cards in their deck they just don't want in their opening hand in Narc Amoeba and Treeping Chill. And when you add the other equation of answer to ley line into that equation, if they have all of it, it's tough. And they're not going to have it, you know, a lot of the time, but when they do, it's going to be very difficult to win. So, I mean, we add ley line, we add it, you know, but yeah, we have taken the full 12 point or the full 24 point life swing from the creeping chills and we are looking pretty dead here. Yes, the card Stingley Nip is also good against us. All right, so we are dead. All right. Kind of a tough one. It feels pretty bad to have a turn zero ley line in both post-board games and still lose, but them's the breaks. One and one. The matchup seems not great. Um, I would say game one's not awesome. Once you board the ley lines, and obviously things get much better. As we're very, very good at finding Leyline with our Serum Powders, but Game 1 seems pretty tough. And then, of course, Game 2 and 3, if they have a, a good functional hand as well as the uh, the, the answer to Leyline, you're going to be in trouble. But All right, back to it. So we're on the play. So our Gemstone Cavern is not super exciting. With a Turn 1 Chalice in the play, this is going to be a keep. Um, there's, of course, a chance that the Chalice is not going to be good uh, against most decks it is. And then on the play, Turn 1 Chalice is even good against decks like Dredge uh, and things like that, too. So we're going to keep this end. Um, not a lot to follow it up, but it's pretty hard to pass up on turn one Chalice. This is what we, what we signed up for, basically. And I would say there's probably a number of decks in the format that just straight to concede to this. So if they're playing Shadow, then they are basically all in on Gurmag Angler, which is good for us because we have the answer. So... Shadow is definitely one of the decks that uh, does not want to see Chalice on one. All right. And we're off. There you go. It's fun magic. I know, right? It's pretty fun. You can't play spells? Okay, I can't play spells. I guess I lose. Let's go to game two. All right, so... They revealed they're playing Shadow and they conceded, which I think was a pretty foolish thing to do. Um, and you're in our opponent's spot in that scenario, and you think you can't win, just concede. Just don't do anything. Because now I know they're playing Shadow, I can sideboard accordingly. If I didn't know that, I would probably just be putting the same uh, same 60 cards back in, you know? Unfortunately, our sideboard is not great against Shadow anyway. But we're going to want... Sword of Fire and Ice seems bad. Hmm. I'm cool with Endbringer. It's realistically it. Like, it's not much more than I want. Contortion's not good. Warping Whale's not good. Um, Sphere's not good. Orb's not good. Leyline is not good against them. It stops Angler and a few incidental things, but it really is not worth the card. Um. Yeah, it's fine. Fine by me. Fine by me. Typically, the Eldrazi cards are pretty good against Shadow, although we are a little soft to the card Death Shadow itself. Um, if it gets too big, it is a little hard for us to kill directly. Whoa. All right. Um, this is 
hand. I don't think we can mulligan this hand. Serum powder or otherwise, we have two temples. Not a lot of payoffs, but we are on the draw. And honestly, in some ways, it's better just to have the temples and no payoff because they can't thoughts these temples and the top bar deck is going to be super live. So we're going to keep this hand despite the serum powder. Um, Fogmanatic, it's a funny name. All right. Bobble was targeting us. Sure. So like I said, they can't make us discard these, which is the important part of our hand. Um, honestly, it doesn't matter what they take because if they take one, we'll be able to play the other. I'm totally fine playing a turn two, turn one reshaper. It's fun. I mean, we have some real big draws here. <laughs> Any thought not our smasher is absurd. Cavern of Souls actually also isn't bad. Um, Ceremonious Rejection, definitely a card they could have in. That was targeting us as well. Mistress Bobble, what an ugly magic card. The delayed cantrip trigger is probably one of the worst designs ever. All right, so not great, but we could name Ape with uh, our cavern and uh, just cast this uh, Simeon Spirit guy, but I don't think we're there yet on that. Let's just play a Muta Vault and say go. There could be a slight argument for not attacking at all because we are theoretically powering up possible shadows, but I think that that's just a little crazy. Wow. Brick City over here. And Temple City over here. Alright, we're going to fire in. They have like a push something, it's fine. I think... Oh, let me think about this for a second, actually. When we attack and put them to 12, they can just cast a shadow. Maybe I don't actually want to attack. Right now, if they draw a fetch line, they still can't cast shadow. Oh, a shadow's so hard to play against. Like, their hand has to be... Like, shadow's one of the cards that makes sense. It's not discard spells, it's not lands. Yeah, I think I'm actually not going to attack. I think I just, I just screwed up. I'm just going to eat it. I should have cast Serum Powder. But... Yeah, I think attacking is just wrong. They're not developing their board currently, and we are. So there's no reason to allow them to develop their board by allowing them to cast Shadow. Sure. So yeah, I wish we played this this year in Bowders. We, we draw a Smasher, now we can't meet a Vault also. Okay. Could get in for six. Again, that turns on their shadows. I don't think I'm ready to do that yet. Now they have now we have dismember. So they play a shadow, we can kill it. So we attack for six, they go to ten. They would play a three-three shadow. If they have a fetch land, it's a six-six shadow, and we can't kill it. So actually, I think we're going to do its act, but we're going to serum powder and its act for not enough to actually put them to what would make Shadow not dismemberable. So now if they fetch and shock, they go to eight. It would be a four four shadow. Right, there's a one one. Pretty sure we're casting that. Um I almost think we just attack. And don't even, I don't even kill this yet. Well, no, never mind. Once I attack, they just take it and it gets too big to kill. So we have to kill it. So are we casting the spirit guide? No, I don't think we are. 
Casting Spirit Guy would mean one less mute of alt attack. They say they have a second shadow though, it's just so bad. This is one of the hardest cards to play and play against in the history of magic. I think it's also possible I just don't do anything again. There's just so many options. Like, if we attack, if we kill it and attack, and they have another shadow, now, now to be a, they'll take six, they're at six, it'll be a seven, seven, and then we're just kind of like, now what? You know? Um, if we don't do anything, if we just like play Simeon Spirit Guide, say go, and they play another shadow, that's better because we can at least attack and do it. With two, four, six, eight. Yeah. I oh, this game is hard. Alright. I'm gonna say go. Okay. So they drew a fetch land, which is super awkward. Um, now they have a 4-4, four, four, which is still fine. If they have a Stubborn Denial also, then things start to look really ugly for us. This is fine. Yeah. Maybe an angle or two. That is bad. That is bad. And they're at nine. <sighs> I guess the shadow's worse than the angler, so. Alright, we're gonna kill the shadow and hopefully draw like a smasher or something, basically. It's really just where we're at. Any threat. That is not a threat. And the opener was good, but this has been another really, really awkward game of magic. Uh, we attack them with everything. They eat one, take six, go to three, attack us for 15 and kill us. So, gross, basically. Um, yeah, we are in a bit of trouble here. I'm just going to play this. So I don't like it. I guess I could have just held both lands. I guess they had. Somebody made me discard, but. I think we're in pretty big trouble now. I mean, realistically, you've only actually drawn three spells this game. In Mimic, Reshaper, and Dismember. Spirit Guide, Spirit Guide, Pure Powder, all mana sources. Oh my god. Uh... And it's cool that our lands do things, but they're not doing enough things to matter. I like their play in the early game. I liked our, our read as far as like not attacking for a few turns. And they have a battle rage here, we're dead. This looks like a battle rage. Yeah, maybe you just can't do anything. They have battle rage. Don't even have lethal on the way back. Block everything. I guess we can survive battle rage. Just lead back mimic. Hope we draw smasher. Hope they have nothing else. Block here, Nexus, 2-2 two, two here, 2-2 two, two here, Battle Rage deals, uh, deals 8, duh. Uh, yeah, I mean, we just can't be Battle Rage, I suppose. Oh, never mind, I can, oh, can't do it. I animated this. I screwed up. I could have pumped the Muta Vault to a 3-3 to not die to Battle Rage. 
That actually would have been gas. Um, yeah, that's a really clever play. I could have used Blank Mob Nexus to pump the Muta Vault. I could have activated Muta Vault, activate Muta Vault, and then Spirit Guide on Snapcaster, both Muta Vaults on Shadow and Ring Angler. They Battle Rage the Angler. It's now a 10 power Double Striker. We pump the Muta Vault with Nexus. They might not see that play. And then we can untap and draw Smasher and then win. Um, so we did not leave ourselves an out here. Um, which kind of stinks, honestly. That, that actually is a really cool play. I am a little sad I didn't see that before I activated this. Because now it's, it's summoning seconds, so I can't do it. Um, I mean, we'll, we're gonna make the make some blocks anyway, which is not that of battle rage. I'm hope, just hope we draw Smasher and they have nothing, which is almost impossible. But so yeah, that, that that's a really cool play. I just didn't see in the moment. This thing pumps Blink Moths. This is obviously a Blink Moth, and then that third toughness survives battle rage for exact. It's cute. It's cool. Again, it also requires them to have nothing, go for battle rage, and we draw Smasher, but. That's how, you know, people ask where do better players get their edge? That's one of them right there is winning the games like this where they make the right play to give themselves the, you know, 10% chance to draw Smasher, win the game, and they do it sometimes. And that's a win that wouldn't have been there otherwise. So, all right. Um, yeah, and we'll just not die to Battle Rage, I guess. Which is not good, but. Those are honestly the kind of plays that are hard to see when I'm, when we're doing a video or we're streaming because we're talking out all of our plays. It's hard to find the really cool, non-intuitive plays when you're verbalizing your plays because you're kind of just like verbalizing the, the more obvious stuff. Um, I don't make excuses, but obviously I missed it. But it's definitely easier to see those things when you're kind of like just not talking and looking at the board closely. But it is a really cool, cheeky play. All right, so we draw Smasher, they have nothing. Not quite. Um, I mean, we still can't beat a Battle Rage, but I, I guess we'll keep playing in case they don't have it. All right, whatever. They assuredly have it. That's fine. Now that now, now Shadow is also super big too. So, all right, tough game there. Um. A lot of lands, unfortunately, but let's keep rocking. Screw beats flood. Just one of the fundament, fundamental rules of magic. The amount of flooded player has to kill the amount of screwed player before they draw lands, because if they ever do draw lands, they have all gas in their hand and they crush you. And we did not do that, unfortunately. So, all right. First ball up is a turn one chalice hand again. Um, there is a Serum Powder, and it's only a one-lander. So this is worse than our, our game one end. Doesn't even have a second mana source, so we are going to turn one on Chalice, and then we are not going to be able to do much for a long time. We do have Dismember for Angler, which is good. They're going to have brought in probably between two and three answers to Chalice. Um, not going to have many, honestly. So Chalice is going to be exceedingly good, um, but one mana source is really tough. Uh, the presence of Serum Powder also which makes this a free mulligan, exiling a lot of the, the crap in our deck. We're exiling no good Eldrazi cards and no temples. <sighs> this one's really close. Look, if they just have an abrade, then the... Uh, the gig, the gig is up, and we're going to get destroyed. We are leaning excessively hard on this Chalice of the Void. But we do have an answer to do a like, Angler. <sighs> oh. We are on the plays. We, yeah, we, we have to draw running lands to actually do anything. I'm going to Powder this. I think if this Powder was like a Reality Smasher, I would keep. Um, but given that it's a free powder mulligan, 
I'm willing to let it go. Um, it just like they just like might never actually cast a spell. It's, it's this is so tough. Again, the, the the presence of dismember makes it so that the the angler won't kill us either. They may actually just never cast a spell, or they'll cast spells. They won't do anything. I'm gonna keep it. This might be wrong, but I'm really not sure. If a system burst in here, easy mulligan, but they kept seven. Here we are. We have 22 lands in our deck and three spirit goods. All right, so they are building up to an angler. All right, that's a miss. I mean, can't imagine they would throw away the discard spell if they actually had the abrade, unless they just drew it. Oh, brutal. Okay, um, that's a thing. We are going to dismember that because we have to. We have a second one anyway, so. Thank God, no second snap. Second snap makes things so complicated. All right, give me the angler. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Oh, we're halfway there. Please, no second angler. All right. This is just, just magic the way it was intended, you know? This is definitely what Richard Garfield had in mind. Oh yeah, let's go. Yeah. One, 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 one. Well, there you go. I am not. I am still not totally sure if I was a keep or not, but the game played out basically perfectly. Um, the Sapcaster was awkward because if we hadn't drawn the second dismember, then that would have been really, really awkward um, because we don't want to use the first one on it because we need to save it for the Angler. But, um, I mean, they couldn't cast any spells because we had Chow, so that's, that's, what, that's what we're supposed to do. 2-1. I think Shadow feels like a pretty good matchup. Our poor opponents. You know, one mana spells are very good. They are the backbone of all the the older formats. Chalice says no. Ooh. Playing against my teammate and current reigning players champion, Joe Asset. I believe Joe is playing Tron for this weekend. Of course, I'm recording this before the weekend, so. Um, hands fine. We are on the draw. We can, we can this. Actually, that sounds great. I'm sorry. I missed the Scourge. It sounds actually excellent. A mulligan to six. We have turn one, gemstone, exiling Scourge. Tron is definitely not a great matchup for us. Um, they go over the top what we're doing very well, but our good hands definitely beat them pretty hard. So let's just draw some good cards. Ghost Quarter is also obviously great. So 
Um, yeah, we can just Scourge here. Scourge. I guess Scourge is actually bad against Ballista. Yeah, we'll just we'll just play the uh, Reshaper. So we have Threats and a Ghost Quarter. Joe Mulligan to five here. So he's planning his Tron deck correctly. Ooh, second land, Ghost Quarter. Not good. You never want your second land to be Ghost Quarter when you're playing Tron, that's for sure. Ours is mine, sure. Matter, Reshaper again. All right. Um, I'm just going to run that train again. Uh, we are not going to reveal our Ghost Quarter yet. Not the fastest clock, no thought not, no smasher, but it plays. It plays. Hmm. Okay. So we will set a stop with our draw step and play Goose Quarter. And say go. Damn if you do, damn if you don't. They get a tower. Let them draw. And we hit. They played Ursus Mine as the most recent one. Yeah, so we'll play Kill the Mine. They definitely have none either way because they played the Ghost Quarter, but. Alright. And we are two turns from victory. If Joe is able to reassemble Tron for next turn, things could go badly for us, but... Is it Ballista? Alright, that's fine. Obviously awkward against our uh, Eternal Scourge, but... It does allow us to target for our Dismember, which is fine. We're going to take that opportunity to do that. Just, otherwise, they'll block and shoot, so just... Basically a Lightning Bolt here. Ooh, F6. That's not good, Joe. Chalice of the Void. All right, so Chalice on one is actually surprisingly efficient against uh, Tron. Turns off all their their cantrip artifacts. All right, we're going to play everything because if they have O Stone, we have the Matter Shaper anyway. So Chalice on one. It looks like I might have stolen a game one here from Tron. And that old uh, the old Ghost Quarter. Oh, oh. Natural Tron and a concession. That's good. What could their hand be? Well, I guess it could be all like ones. Yeah. Hand could have been like stirring, stirring something. Sweet. Um, Damping Sphere is coming in. Otherwise, there's not much. Warping Whale isn't the worst. Counter Stirrings, Counter Scrying. Uh, obviously, our Dismembers aren't very good. Though yeah, we'll, we'll be bringing in Thrag Toss, which is very good against us. But I think I'm okay with this. Uh, Sword of Fire and Ice, I'm still fine with that. Don't want Embringer. We are not interested in playing a longer game. We will lose all of the longer games pretty badly, so. Yes, this is obviously Monday, but of course the tournament last weekend was SCG Philly, where myself, Joe, Tannen, and Nicole are all going to be playing Tron, I believe. Okay, Mulligan 6. We have a pretty mopey hand with a damping sphere. Um... The hand is quite bad, though. We have a Ghost Quarter, too. But realistically, this hand kind of sucks. Um, we have two Alpha Mirrors, which is your Goblin Piker, if you will, um, and a Muta Vault, and not much else. And if they threaten Tron on three, we have to cast Damping Sphere on two. We can't even cast the stupid two ones. This is a pretty easy Serum Powder Mulligan. This Powder was like a third Mimic 
It's a little less clear, but this is a pretty easy powder, I think. Next hand is uh, Thought Knot, Spirit Guide, Mimic, Shaper, Eternal Scourge. So a one lander with Spirit Powder and Eternal Scourge, easy. Next hand. Next hand is Gas. This is an all prison hand. And it looks kind of bad because we don't have any threats, right? Well, our threat's hiding out right over here. There it is. Uh, definitely a keep. Uh, turn one Chalice on one. Turn two Damping Sphere. Chalice will stop Joe's ability to play Nature's Claim. Uh, I suppose the Oblivion Stone is really bad for us, but... Joe, Joe is mulligan to five. So that's also bad news for Joe. All right, we're going to do Chalice on one here. This will lock out all of Joe's Chromatic Spheres, Chromatic Stars, and Ancient Stirring, which is very, very good. Assuming that those are the cards that uh, he has. Can it be? Sure. And nothing. Okay. Warping Whale is not particularly great. Why can't this card be a tribal instant, you know? Why couldn't we do that? Alright. Um, I think we're still playing Reshaper over uh, Eternal Scourge for the same reasons as before against Blista. But we have the Eternal Scourge in waiting in the wings. The Ghost Quarter. All right. Joe's hands have been pretty bad. Oblivion Stone, sure. So that's kind of annoying. Uh, but we can hopefully Damping Seer post Oblivion Stone. That's not bad. Um, okay. We'll use Spirit Guide. Eternal Scourge. Can't even four here. Still two turns two turns from casting O Stone anyway. From popping O Stone. We have seven power and blight. Okay, that's a little scary. Uh, Tron is being threatened, but Gemstone Caverns? Okay. We're not casting Damping Sphere into the uh, the O Stone, so we're just attacking and having Warping Whale up. Um, Natural Tron comes off. That's kind of just is what it is, honestly. We have Sylvan Scrying covered. Um... Ballista is not bad. That definitely buys them a significant amount of time. Uh, do we make a 1-1? One, one? They block Matter Reshaper. They can shoot Scourge and shoot Nexus. Uh, if I Warping Well, they shoot that. Yeah, it doesn't even do anything. That's pretty good. Um, all right, yeah, we just fire in. They might just sh no. Nah, they shoot the scourge. We can kill the ballista. So they're very likely to block and shoot. So no nexus. I'm used to saying they because I'm used to streaming and not gendering my opponent, but our opponent's Joe, obviously. So. If right, they shoot that. That dies. Ballista dies. We play Muta Vaults, which plays very nicely against O Stone. We play Eternal Scourge. We're looking pretty good here. Of course, our creature lands are immune to the effects of Oblivion Stone. We have a Damping Sphere. All right, sure. So Joe's hands are pretty bad there. I think this is not a great matchup for us, but we do have four Ghost Quarters. We do have good sideboard cards. Chalice on one, still pretty good. So. Um, definitely capable of winning, of course. So three and one. Our loss was to um. Well, I forgot already. Getting old's tough, you know. Just going senile. Just can't remember what happened like two hours ago. I'm just here in the moment, living, living my life best I can. <laughs> what do we lose to? Um. 
Oh yeah, Dredge. Right. Yeah, that's right. Leyline of the Void. Nature's Claim. Got it. I was there. You were too. How's it going? My name's Jim Davis. Welcome. Okay. So I would love for there to be a serum powder in his hand, obviously. It would be the uh the old malt nine, but his hand's just terrible, so Mulligan. Next hand is on the play. Turn one chalice for one. Not much else, but I'm pretty sure we're keeping this hand on the play. Again, turn one, chalice for one on the play will elicit a concession from half a decks in the format. And it's very good otherwise, and against other decks. And then we have a scry, you can find some lands, you have a two drop and a three drop. Uh, we're going to keep this. All right, easy bottom. And your turn. Don't be playing something that's not affected by Chalice of the Void. <laughs> Good joke, Jim. Hey, Markov. Pendlehaven? I mean, they're playing Infect? It's Blighted Agent or Bust, I guess? Chalice? Ugh. Scrybug? Why you gotta do this to me? Don't play Blighted Agent. Please. Oh, no, they're playing Hardened Scales. Okay, so Chalice on one, not really very good against them, unfortunately. Yeah, all right, we're going to get destroyed. All right. Uh, it stops the card Hardened Scales, obviously, but all their best cards cost two. Arbound Ravager, Hanger Back, Ballista, Steel Overseer, etc., etc. Um, we were probably in very big trouble. Took our risk, and uh, has not paid off. It's cute. Fire up Nexus, turns on Metalcraft, gets played 2 drop again. Never mind. I mean, their, can, their hand could be like Arcbound Worker, Arcbound Worker, Hardened Scales, Hardened Scales. That would go a long way towards us having a chance at winning this game. Full house. Okay, so them not having a play last turn and cracking canopy first thing to do this turn means their hand probably is like hardened scales, hardened scales, a worker, worker, animation module or something because they're not doing anything else. So, you're telling me there's a chance. There might be a chance this game. You know, just, just magic. It's perfect. I lock them into playing spells. They kill me with a 1-1. One, one. <laughs> just, just perfect, you know? Just poetic. We deserve this. I'm trying to make our opponent not play spells and all. Ah, they're up in the clock. Let's earn up the juice. Okay, well, I mean, that wasn't the most fun game Magic I ever played, but we did something, and it was kind of what we were trying to do, so <laughs> didn't do much else. Um, this matchup seems kind of tough. Typically, the hard scales decks are quite good against um, any creature-based strategy. Their ballistas are really good. Their hanger backs are really good. Um... We're going to want these contortions, unfortunately, are not very good, but honestly, we could bring in Leyline of the Void. Now, hear me out. 
so they have no graveyard interactions, but Leona of the Void turns off the modular ability on Arcbound Worker and Arcbound Ravager, as well as the Hangerback Walker's Death Trigger. So it's actually not that bad. Um, turning Ravager into a really, really bad ATOG and Arcbound Worker into a 1-1 a one -one essentially is not bad. If you feel like we're like super far behind and need to just kind of cheese them out, that is a possible path we could take. Um, Chalice of the Void is not great. Uh, Chalice on two is actually quite good. I think we're, we're probably going to want to cut our Mimics because they're so bad against Ballista anyway. Maybe we just cut these. And then also turns on our ability to, ch to Chalice on two. Maybe we bring in some Ley Lines. I feel like we want these Contortions. It doesn't even really kill a lot of stuff, but we have four Dismembers also. That's a tough one. Maybe we even want like a mix. Maybe we just cut like two Chalices. So our goal is to Chalice on two. So like we don't really need it early. And then maybe we bring in the Contortions and bring in the Ley Lines. I almost don't hate the Endbringers, but that probably doesn't favor us. Maybe we just cut the Chalices altogether. Countering, well, the thing is, I guess countering two drops isn't even that good because the they can always play Ballista. Like, I'm thinking of Hangerback and Ballista as two drops, and the reality is they can play them on four. Yeah, I'm going to cut these. I'm bringing these. All right, so we're... We're pretty drastically altering our strategy here. Um, we have seven removal spells, Endbringer, and then we have Leyline to kind of try to try and make their cards worse, and then hope it's good enough. But it's it's going to be tough. It's going to be pretty tough. Turning off Hangerback Walker is pretty good. So I like I like our 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 thinking here. It's a little outside the box. This is a turn two thought not seer on the play. I don't think I can. I can let that go. Um, I don't know if Thought Not Seer is going to be good enough, but to Serum Powder this hand, we are losing a Temple and a Thought Not Seer. Yeah, we're just going to keep. It is not great, but We will have played a Thought Not Seer before they can play almost any of their namesake cards except for Hardened Scales. Not a very good. I mean, the, the Creature Lands help. Powder's irrelevant. Yeah, working on it. The Ghost Quarter's not bad. Ghost Quarter helps to attack the Ink Moth Nexus angle from the deck. All right, hope it's really bad. It is not bad. It's actually excellent. They have a Ravager, a Worker. They have a Sparring Construct. Wow. And they have a Ballista. All right. I mean, it's actually pretty mopey. But they can just kind of play Ballista and play bad Workers and start blocking. That's kind of the problem is that we don't really get over them. Like, oh. Well, their hand was medium, and it just became medium plus, 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 plus. Uh, now their hand's supercharged, and we're going to lose, unfortunately. But now they can just block double modular. Yeah, this is really bad. If I attack with the worker, they block in modular. This becomes a 4-4. Four, four. I just can't ever... Yeah, it, we're just never going to be able to attack on the ground anymore. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're just dead. We can... We will give it the old college try, I guess, but... Wow, no blocks. Interesting. That was good. That was good. It's hard to scale like it's very weird. It's like... It's good draws are unbeatable. It's bad draws would probably lose to draft decks. And then somewhere in the middle, 
That's funny. It's time to go with the hard skills. Um, its medium draws are like very good against creature decks. Pretty bad against things like Tron. Um, just kind of like sort of medium. All right, so we smash her, attack for a million, hope we don't die. Cool. Works for me. Let's name... Cantaloupe. Caribou? Cantaloupe? That was a cantaloupe. Cantaloupe is not a creature type? I'll be damned. Hmm. Alright, how about caribou? I like caribou. Who's my caribou? Alright, I mean, we attack. The block construct on Thought Knots here. And modular to something. And probably take the five. We have some creature lands. Maybe we can sneak some damage through. The Ballista will be a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, play land pump, it's a 6-6. Six, six, capable of doing 12 damage, 30-14. They only had 15 on board. So, I guess they could kill a Thought Knot Seer too. That's bad for us. Chose not to. Okay. Um, that's really aggressive. All right. If we draw a smasher here, do we just kill them? Let's draw one and find out. Poop. I wanted it. I really wanted it. Uh, we attack with both. They block with worker. Modular to the ballista. Ballista becomes a 6-6. Six, six, and we are really dead. Um... Suppose we can just let them screw it up, I guess, and just keep attacking. Like we we really need to get through in the ground at some point, so Yeah, we just smashed it there, they were just dead. That would have been awesome. I guess the the ballista could have killed the thought knots here. So or like the meter vault we fired up, but seems they've played this game pretty risky, honestly. Now they want to kill the Thought Knots here? We're like probably dead on board. Right? This was a 6-6 six, six Ballista. We're at 11. They get pumped to 7-7, seven, seven, pumped to 8-8. Eight, eight. We can't block it. They just ping us. In. All right. It's not, not worth trying to figure it out, I guess. Okay. Didn't animate. Okay. I mean, yeah, we're pretty freaking dead. Yeah, attempt to make some blocks. Guess I should fire up. Nah, yeah, fire up the Nexus. Sure. I'm trying to use Nexus to pump, but it's not going to matter. They'll shoot Nexus. We fire up Muta Vault. And they're trying to shoot it. All right, they're playing a little sloppy. So they shoot again. Are we still dead anyway? Probably. Shoot again. One, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty-four. Yeah, we're just super dead. All right, whatever. All right, so kind of tough one. Um, they uh, that hard scales was a pretty sick rip, but it's a pretty bad matchup for us either way. Um, not a very commonly played deck, hard and scales, but all right, so three and two. Um, of course, we didn't play against Phoenix, the one thing we wanted to do, but we got the clown Death Shadow pretty bad with our chalices. Um, 
Going over the deck, I'm not sure about the Sword of Fire and Ice. It's pretty cute. I saw it in a list. It looked kind of cool, but it might be better or something else. I think that, honestly, playing Endbringer main is not unreasonable. Um, I would not mind another higher-end threat, and it seems like the games we're losing were flooding, and Endbringer is obviously very good at that. So I can see just playing an Endbringer in the main, free up a sideboard slot. Um, I think one card I want to try on the sideboard is All is Dust, as like a one or two of, for the Spirits and Humans matchups that are pretty hard for us. Um, it's quite the haymaker. And between our, our Temples and our Spirit Guides and our Powders, you can probably get there. Um, and if you cast it and it resolves, you probably just win the game on the spot. So that's a card I like to try on the sideboard, All is Dust. Um, the correct mix for lands. I think this is too many Cavern of Souls. Um, I don't think that control decks are very popular right now at all. Honestly, it's amusing that the Cavern of Souls actually seem better in the post-board matchups when decks have rejection, um, but otherwise don't seem particularly great. Whereas the Muta Vaults and Nexus or Nexi were pretty cool. Scavenger Grounds is pretty cool. Um, I can see honestly sliding a Cavern into the board having an extra land on the board, you've got to board out your gemstone caverns in the play. That's probably not necessary, but also against fair decks, I think boarding out some, some number of spirit guides for actual lands is a little more reasonable because the game's going to go longer. So having a land in the sideboard is not crazy, and it should probably be a cavern of souls if that's going to be the case. Um, so I could see going down on cavern of souls, up on muta vault, maybe a third scavenger grounds. I don't think herb work is necessary either. Um, it's obviously there to try and hard cast this member, but that's just silly. Like, that's going to happen... Literally, if you play a 15-round tournament, that might happen once in the entire tournament. Whereas if it's Urborg, which is like a good spell land, it'd be a lot better. So, um, I can see a third Scavenger Grounds, uh, maybe a third and fourth Muta Vault, up the uh, the gas a little bit, and then maybe a slide a Cavern to the board over the Caverns. Um, Sword becomes Endbringer, and... Then in the Endbringer slot in the board, maybe play like an All is Dust or two. Maybe cut a Contortion also, so it's the same matchup. Maybe cut Contortion, Endbringer for two All is Dust, and you could add the land of the board or not. It's honestly pretty either way. But deck is super sweet. That's a lot of fun. Um, we get the Serum Powder an insane amount, but the Serum Powder Eternal Squirt interaction is just awesome. And... The power of the Eldrazi cards is really cool. So if you've been looking to play Eldrazi in Modern and been missing out for a little bit, maybe your old Bant Eldrazi deck or Eldrazi Tron deck has been collecting dust, this is the best way to do it, I think. I think this colorless Eldrazi deck has been pretty under the radar for a while. And I think it's um, better than it looks, for sure. Again, the Scourge interaction is so good. And Chalice of the Void seems pretty good right now. So if you're looking for a good Chalice of the Void deck, it's also that as well. So check it out. Give it a try. And... Uh, Make, well, may all of your opening hands be nine carters. So, for Jim Davis, thanks for watching um, here on CoolStuffInc.com. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hop on over to the actual CoolStuffInc.com site proper, where there's a written article that goes along with this video. Definitely want to check that out, of course. Of course, I have my video articles here every Monday, as well as my written articles every Friday. And, of course, you can use my promo code JIM5 for 5% off your order on CoolStuffInc.com. Magic and more. Board games, uh, supplies, you name it, coolstuffinc.com has it. So thanks for watching. And I've also subscribed to the, the YouTube channel if you're watching on the site. Make sure you get the cross uh, cross juvenation going on. Cool? Cool. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you guys next time.